Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. This is a crank web off of a KT100. It's a, it's a Yamaha crankshaft. I guess they use these things in karting. I'm really not familiar with the sport, but we can definitely stroke this crankshaft. And uh, that's what my customer wants me to do. He said 5 to 7 millimeter stroke. I'm going to actually run with the 5, and that's going to square this engine off pretty good as far as uh, bore to stroke. Right now, the uh, stroke is shorter than the bore. This is going to get it within a millimeter, which is uh, going, to, going to work out for him pretty good. This is the setup we're going to use. Again, if, you, if this is the first video you're watching on this, um, you know we do a lot of work with crankshafts, but you, you have to be very, very accurate. We're going to cut this. We're going to actually bore this hole off center by two and a half millimeters or a hundred thousandths. Once we bore it off center, we're going to start opening up the boring bar. What that's going to do is come back in, make contact with this, and then I'm going to have an approximate uh, two and a half millimeter wall on a bushing. We're going to press a bushing into it, TIG weld around it, uh, bore the bushing, and then put the pin back in and voila, stroke crankshaft. Uh, accuracy, pinnacle if you're doing something like this. It's a gear cutting head. And uh, what I've done is I put a, this is actually an old fork tube, but really accurate stuff. I mean, fork tubes cannot be bent. So we cut this off nice and straight. I went ahead and indicated it this way, make sure I'm straight. I trimmed my table before I even mounted this gear head and then uh, indicated around. What that's gonna do is put me dead center to this fixture with the center of the mill. We're gonna mount this and I'll show you how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna get this thing centered. This fixture is going to get me close. All it is is a pointer. I moved out my amount of stroke. And I'm just going to drop this pointer in. And as I move this in, this crankshaft is not, it's not extremely tight in here. So I can move this around. And this is the same principle as the alignment fixture that, fixture that we built in here. So when that sinks, I'm right where I want to be as far as this way. Maybe not this way, but I'm going to pick it up with an indicator. One thing I want to mention, which you have to keep in mind, this is not the final adjustment. This is going to get me in the ballpark, and that's it. The next step is to get an indicator on my quill, indicate this hole. Now, it's going to be okay to move the table this way or this way. That's it, but not the table this way or this way. That's where the gear head comes in. If I find my dimensions off from here to here in relationship to the center of the hole in this direction, I'm just going to rotate the chuck until I have zero all the way around. So what, what I'm doing right now is picking up the pinhole with a dial indicator. Okay, this is the setup we're going to use to indicate that pinhole. And, um, you know, I'm sure you, a lot of you guys know this stuff, but these videos are for the benefit of people that are trying to learn and maybe don't, you know, aren't, aren't as smart as the rest of you guys, so I'll mention it. Whenever you're going to sweep with an indicator like this, the last thing you want to do is touch this. You don't want to be touching here or up here. The best way to do this is just reach up into the top of the, of the bridge port and grab the pulley. That way you're not going to disturb anything. But we're going to go ahead and uh, indicate this. And right now, initially, it looks looks like it's pretty close. But I'll indicate this uh, right to a perfect zero and uh, no compromise on this. This has to be perfect. I went ahead and swept the hole. And the uh, alignment pin got me within a thousandth. It was perfect this way. But I did, I suspect it had to loosen the chuck and just, I had to rotate it you know, minuscule amount, but I was off a thousandths from here to here. At this point, we're dead nuts with the quill on center of where this old pinhole was. The next step is, again, we're going to stroke this crank five millimeters. So we're going to move off of this center line, this direction. We're going to move off two and a half millimeters. I'm going to go a hundred thousandths. I've got my boring bar set up and I'm set up right to the diameter and right on center with that hole. What I'm going to start doing next is because we're going to stroke this five millimeters, I'm going to move off the center two and a half millimeters. So I'm going to it's set right to the size of that hole. What I'm going to do is start dialing it, I'm going to start dialing it this way with my DROs and I'm going to move the 100 thousandths. At that point, I'm going to start opening up the boring bar 
to get a round hole with everything off center and that will determine the size of the bushings that I need to make. So again, I took the boring bar, I set it to the size of the hole and started walking it over this way and I moved 100 thousandths, that's my stroke. Next thing I'm going to do is start opening up the boring bar because what I have is an oblong hole at this point. That's going to make room for the bushing. We're going to have about a hundred thousandths wall on the bushing. Here's the finished crank web um, out of the machine. And again, what we did is we just moved it uh, one hundred thousandths. And then when you do that, you have to open up the hole. And we're going to have to make a bushing. But as you can see, this pen, once it's relocated, we've moved the stroke up a hundred thousandths, two and a half millimeters and uh, we'll make the bushings and get the other one done next. This is the setup I'm using to make the bushings and uh, it's, it's pretty simple. We really didn't know what this outside dimension was going to come out to until we took that web and poured it out. Uh, I'll make the next one exactly the same and now we know what to turn the outside down to. Use the boring bar. Uh, that was easy. I was doing this while the other one was boring and uh, board the inside for the pen, 2000s press fit, that's what uh, OEM was, and I'm going to weld this crankshaft anyway. But uh, one thing, and again, redundant, and, you know, most of you guys probably know, you know, what you're doing, and, uh, but some of you, these are educational videos, and never take this piece out. Whenever you're making a bushing like this, this is a crankshaft, this is extremely accurate. Don't take the piece out for any reason at all. Do the outside, cut the outside to the dimension you want, bore the inside to the dimension you want, and then part off from there, finish the edges. And uh, that's how we're making the bushings. Got our bushings TIG welded in. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to check this distance here, and make sure everything's flush, especially here where the bearings mount. And I'll just uh, take a small stone. I mean, I can feel just a little ridge here. I'll take a small stone and make sure this is level. Knock the birds off the other side. Everything here is clean. Uh, I just did the last final inspection and uh, check the inside diameter of the bushings that are, you know, after they're installed. Make sure nothing changed. Check my pen again. I'm running uh, a little bit over two thousandths press fit. Not quite two and a half, but um, pretty close. And I'm going to put this together and see how close we can get her.